Hey guys, it's John. You're in the JRB Tree Climbing Channel. Let's talk about bridge designs. If you refer to my website, jrbtreeclimbing.com, you'll find all of my bridge designs. And you'll recall that I've said it in the past, I reserve the right to improve things. I reserve the right to make it better. This video will detail how I have constructed my short bridge, my short redundant bridge, out of uh, prior design. I've got a dedicated video on this device which is the Blake's Hitch Tensioner. As fashioned here, I can shorten this device by pulling on a strand and it immediately takes load and I can lengthen it by pulling on a strand and it immediately takes load. The Blake's Hitch is being automatically tended by the carabiner. This same design is now being fashioned into a bridge but the bridge has no metal. I'm using the bridge loops to effectively take the place of the carabiner. Features of this bridge Number one, it's constructed with a single piece of cordage. In this case, I've chosen Sterling 6mm TRC. Now, some might think that's a, a bit aggressive, but this cordage is rated at 15.5 kilonewtons. And when my weight is on it like this, my weight is being distributed amongst four strands. I find this to be more than adequate for my redundant bridge, and I trust my life on it. It's got no metal in the design and it fails safe. By that I mean if a friction hitch, in this case the Blake's hitch, were to fail to hold, there's a stopper knot on the end that prevents the bridge from letting go. And again, it's adjustable with one hand, one hand adjustable, one hand I can make it shorter, and with one hand I can make it longer. But that adjustment cannot be made while the bridge is under load and I find that I don't need that feature with my redundant bridge and if I ever did in an emergency situation I ever needed to lengthen this bridge because it was the only one I was on and I had no footing there is a way to do that and I'll show you that once we're in a tree but this video is going to be dedicated to creating this bridge. This bridge can be used in conjunction with my design. This is my main bridge. This is my separate video on this, but this is the Longhorn Agile Bridge. But this could be a, a factory bridge. You might like the factory bridge that is already on your saddle. And so that's why we got separate videos on these two different bridge designs. This bridge works well in conjunction with a, another bridge because it floats around. It floats on my bridge loops and by harnessing the fact that there's already a cinching connection to my bridge loop, loop on each side, I am able to keep this more stable. And lastly, because I'm a fan of the Munter friction hitch, I've got options for how this carabiner engages. It could, this would be a you know a normal mode that folks would have it, but I also can can mount it in a transverse fashion, and that's perfect for a munter. And of course, it's strong and stable. Okay, I'm going to take it off so we can show you how to build one. Okay, I've got my saddle strung up here such that this is my right bridge loop. This is my left bridge loop as you would look down into your lap at your saddle. And that's how I prefer to tie it. It's just that I wouldn't be able to keep you in view. I will be using eight feet of six millimeter Sterling TRC. I've tied this with a number of other cordages. Here I've got some quality eight millimeter cords that I've used for this and here's some quality seven millimeter cords. I just prefer the TRC because it's so lean, so strong and happens to be the same material that I built my Longhorn Agile bridge that is already on my saddle. You may be building your redundant bridge with a different bridge already on your saddle and that's fine but I'm going to tie mine with the Longhorn Agile number one that's because what I use and prefer but number two I can show you the details of how I weave it inside of this bridge to ensure that this bridge doesn't go anywhere I've learned over the years that I don't want my redundant bridge which doesn't cinch I don't want it on the bottom side 
of my main bridge because it'll just flop down and be too low. I'm always pulling it up. I prefer to have it on the top side and if possible infused with this bridge. So I'm going to take my eight foot length. I'm going to pass it inside the bridge loops. No surprise there. But instead of building it here, I'm going to take this end and I'm, I'm going to work it through this this aperture. See there's an aperture inside of, see where my finger is? There's an aperture inside of the bottom of the Longhorn Agile. I'm going to build my bridge in that aperture because it runs freely and it'll never walk around. And I'm going to build my bridge such that it, it adjusts right here. That's where the Blake's hitch tensioner is. I'm going to measure 32 inches of working end so I've got 32 inches of working end here with my right hand and that's where I am going to begin to form my Blake hitch now it is important it is important that you have reviewed my video on the Blake's hitch tensioner because it'll be really difficult to follow in this orientation all of the details so be sure you know if you want to pause this video and go to that and make sure you understand how to tie Blake's hitch and a Blake's hitch tensioner we're just going to be building on that information we're building a Blake's hitch tensioner right here so with that as prerequisite knowledge I take that 32 inch point and I start to form my Blake's hitch right here in this fashion I'm going to make five wraps that's two three four five wraps Blake's hitch then takes the working end it crosses over the standing end and goes up through these two coils it's a standard five wrap Blake's impossible not to obscure your view at times but I'll do my best so that's a Blake sitch I haven't dressed it real real tight but that's okay and now I'll build the tending loop right the tending loop and what I'll do is I'm going to work it on the other side of my bridge this side will stay in place and this side will stay in place because I'm going to go around the bridge loop but on the other side of my bridge it can't go up and down now and what do I do with the working end I shoot it back down exactly where it came up through these bottom two coils get a little slack in there So the same two coils from which it came up, it goes back down. And now, how close do I want this to, to ride? I don't really want it. I have some control here, right? I don't want it to be way out there with several inches of space, and I don't want it to be absolutely jammed up. So what I'll do is I'll just take this, and it works a little better when I'm wearing it, and I'll bring it in until the Blake's hitch is just about touching the uh, just about touching the bridge loop and right there you can tune this later I'm gonna set a stop or not this is an additional stop or not you don't see inside of the original Blake's hitch tensioner but I'm gonna put a stop or not right here a double overhand stop or not at the bottom of the Blake's hitch coil after that line is returned I'll spin out any extra slack I can. And now I'll dress out the Blake hitch. And it will operate, but I prefer let's let's get things organized. This is the other the other end of the line. Here's my two drop that down here are the two strands forming the bridge the last thing I do is I take this line here I pass it around the back and pop it up 
through the descending line on my Blake's hitch. It just gives it the whole thing a little bit more stability and I'll create, you should have just enough cordage to create a stop or not here. I started with 32 inches and I've learned that I can just form this. Now if your if your bridge loops are a little thicker than mine or a little thinner, this whole thing might come out a little different. You might need a slightly different amount of cord. That's that's fine. You'll have to tie it a few times. But I can repeat this over and over and get good results. So as I've rehearsed this, I realized that it's uh, it's difficult for me to test it without wearing it. But just while we're here in the zoomed in view, I'll point out that when we're adjusting our bridge, this is the long end. And we want to make sure that this end never pulls through the Blake's hitch. So we've got to set a stop or not. And because I've used a little more cord than I need, I can use kind of a greedy stop or not. Instead of simply a double overhand, I'll make something more elaborate. One, two, three, four coils. And if you pop it back just through the end, that's what we call a stevedore. You can use your favorite stop or not. I'm not going to take too much time to get that pretty. But instead of a two, that's a four wrap stevedore. It's nice and bulky. It can consume some extra cord that I might not need. So to shorten the bridge, I pull on that. And you can see what's happening. It's it's shortening and to lengthen it when you're wearing the bridge when you're actually wearing it and you're looking down you you pull on the strand that is closest to your belly you just pull on it and it it lengthens shortens lengthens okay let's go attach that to a tree outside and give it a test run okay let's give it a try We'll try to shorten a little bit, no problem. Load it, I'm gonna try to lengthen a little bit. Now there might be a little bit of a break in the first time that I try to do this. It's a little bit tense, but I, I'm able to move it. Shorten it a little bit more. Some of my earlier prototypes, I used seven feet instead of eight feet of cord, but I've got a little bit extra here on my stopper knot if I decide I need it. So I think I'm going to I'm going to stay with this. Again, shorten it. Lengthen it. And of course, I can mount my tra my carabiner in a transverse fashion by simply crossing the lines and now I'm in a good shape, good position for rappel with the Munter friction hitch. Okay, again, see the prior videos. We are building on information that we've learned in prior videos. I realize there's going to be plenty of folks out there who's like, oh, that's, that's just way too complicated. Please stay away if it's way too complicated. We are building on prior knowledge, and we are making newer and better and higher performing machines because of it. Thank you.